Would you ever consider getting other coaches to help with workload? Yes. That's a great question in the future. Hey, when I go for world domination, I'm going to have my own academy. I will be the head coach, but I'll have like a bunch of other coaches underneath me. Only they would only be approved by me though, obviously, but we're going for world domination. My name is Jules. I'm a Radiant player. If you enjoy this type of content, be sure to like and subscribe considering 80% of you guys are still not subscribed. I do these coaching sessions live, so you're more than welcome to swing by the stream and ask questions. If you're interested in coaching yourself, click the link in the description, click the book a lesson button and select your plan in time. Lastly, if you want a chance to when free coaching, be sure to comment down below your Discord name and why you think you deserve it. I'll be picking out a person randomly. Other than that, enjoy the video. All right, so we have armor, wall. This is the move. All right, let's see what happens here. Hmm. Okay. I don't know about that push down there, Neon, but good around so far. Okay, uh, I'm not a big fan of the crosshair, but I mean, it's all preference, right? They did four second round. Did they win? Oh, wait, I didn't even know they won. I actually thought they lost. Wait, I'm trolling. Ah, yes, good call, chat. <laughs> uh, I, I, I really thought this was a save. Every time you win pistol, you should be full buying Spectre and full armor. Bless you, Till, if you can. So you definitely buy Phantom Full Armor here because you saved the last one, but it's risky to do that that way. All right, you guys want to pop quiz? All right, you know what? I'm going to I'm I'm going to pop quiz chat. Pay attention, class. I uh, actually you go back to 100. Yeah, it was a little waste, but. It's all good. So there's a lot of things, you know, wrong with this. I'm trying to think how I can formulate this in a question where it's obvious enough. All right, all right, here's a pop quiz. All right, chat. What's wrong with going B this early in the round? What was wrong with that? No mid control? Okay. No util wasted. Sage wall in mid. Okay. No map control. Okay. Mid walled off quick rotation. All right, all right. Yeah, so most of you guys are getting the right idea. The problem with this and I, sh I can't stress this enough. When you guys group up either A or B, B is the worst. B is awful, right? Because they usually have a raise and a sage. When they have the raise sage combo, they throw a slow and an aid. Your whole team's dead if you try and execute, okay? So what you need to do is try and get them to use their utility and then you group up and hit something. I don't like this B rush for this example, right? We walked through a molly. We walked through a slow viper orb. It was not looking good and bomb is down. This round is over. What you want to do is you want to go mid you want to go mid for two reasons one break the sage wall so they can't quick rotate because they just rotate from a to b very easily through mid you want to break the wall so they start using their util mid like they use their sage slow they use their nades and then after that you can group up you can go b now because now you're not going to be running into slows into nades and all that good stuff so that's what i would be doing differently yeah does this apply for all maps not all maps but uh most of them yeah some maps are a little bit more straightforward but split w would be like one where the wall is very important but i I guess it is removed, so. Do high elo sages always carrying the spike? Sometimes, most times. It's either on the controller or the ascent, yeah. Ascent as well. Uh, yeah, you could you could definitely give me control and ascent. I like that a lot. How do you convince a low elo team to split instead of five stacking? You just type it in chat. Here's the thing. You cannot fall under this, like, trap, right? And the trap is like, my team never listens to me, so I don't calm because they don't listen to me anyway, so then I don't calm. Because then you're not going to calm ever, and you never know if they listen to you or not. So you want to just calm anyway, be like, hey guys, we should go mid, let's break the wall, and get their util. And then if they don't listen, they don't listen. But you need to be doing that every time. You can't fall under that trap. It's a, it's not good to, to think that way. Do you believe different crosshairs make people play better? They could, if you like looking at one more. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Grouping again? Grouping isn't necessarily bad, but this is a lot better. It's on paper, just looks better. Like, Okay, so I think it's how we're peeking. We're peeking too close to the wall. It comes around, and then after that, you get closer, and then you peek, right? Nah, this isn't the, this isn't the move. Crosshair placement too, yeah. Um, I mean, this is a timing thing. This isn't a crosshair placement issue. This is a timing thing. It was first cleared, and then it goes to clear here, and then we get timing, so this is fine. Uh, so this peak is fine, but then when we do this, this is not okay. So we're splitting A. We have wall. I would probably throw a wall and spawn here before peeking. 
You get traded out. Okay, so there's a lot. There's a couple things wrong here. One, I probably use your slows and stuff before we start peeking these angles. I would probably slow spawn or throw a wall for spawn. And you have your res. When you have your res, you need to be baiting your entire team. You should never be the first person in with your res, right? We are like last person alive. We are hard baiting. So that's a big thing. So same thing happens here, right? We're going in first. Also, our crosshair placement is on the floor. What digital vibrancy you use? I use like 60. I you could increase it a little bit. I would not recommend 100% though. I, I'm very light sensitive. So I play like low brightness, low vibrance. I don't know. It, it really hurts my eyes. 60, 75. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's fun. I mean, 80 is fine too. Whatever whatever you don't find, like if you could play long periods of time with your digital vibrance it's set to whatever it is, then whatever. Some settings are very good because it actually helps like reduce input lag and stuff. But yeah. So crosshair placement, that's definitely the biggest one. So the reason why this angle's bad, is because we're exposed from multiple angles, right? You always want to position yourself in a way that you're only exposed from one, and it should be the angle that you're looking at. Shoot the flash. Okay, this that's works. Forward, we gotta get into sight here. All right, this was a uh, little... Uh, hmm. Okay, so we need to isolate 1v1s. So this never happens, okay? This should never, ever, ever, ever happen. I don't care if you're playing Jet. I don't care if you're playing Reyna. You never see this. You never want to see this. This is insta-death. So we need to make sure we are isolating 1v1s. This is impossible to hold this way. To do this, we can hold a bit more of a passive angle and let them run into us. Should you have waited in the alley? Uh, you could have. Yeah, you could have just dropped like backside or something. There's just like better, way better angles. I'm not, it's really hard to kind of explain exactly like what position you could have played, but I just know that that one was really not good. You, you should never think of it like, oh, is this spot good or bad? Because every spot can be good or bad. But what, how you need to be thinking about it is like, am I isolating the 1v1s? That is the way bigger focus. It's not so much like, oh, it's playing behind this box good or bad. There's merit to, depending on the round, depending on the variables, that spot could be good. If they're rushing and there's five alive, that spot could be very bad. It depends. And there's no like right answer. Is this a good spot or not? But one thing that I want to focus more on is the principle is why a spot is bad. The principle why peeking into four people is bad, right? You're just going to get insta traded. So you need to find a way that you can only peek, that you're only exposed from one person at a time and it's a 1v1. Okay, we slide, we trade. Okay, decent trade, 1v3. We're just kind of wide swinging, right? Like, look at our crosshair placement, wide swinging. I think that's their, our biggest issue, right? What do they do well in this session? All right, all right. So a couple things we did well. Let's think, let's think. So one thing I think that you do well is trading kills. When your teammates are shooting, you're like ready to try and swing and try and trade that kill. Uh, that's something that I don't see a lot of bronze players doing. So I think you do that really, really well. Or what should they spend time practicing before the next session? All right, here's the big one. Okay, so a couple things that I would recommend working on would be um, for starters on attack side, you, and when you have your ult, you want to be further back. You want to be baiting your team. You cannot go first in. We need to be like getting full value out of our ults and uh, be there to kind of trade the team after they go out first, get the kill, then we res, right? Crosshair placement. Our crosshair placement needs to always be head level, always, no matter what. Wherever your eyes are looking, that's where your crosshair should be. Um, another thing is we wide swing a ton. We want to avoid wide swinging where we isolate 1v1s a little bit better. We peek a lot into multiple people and there's no way you win that even if you have the best name in the world. Uh, another thing is utility usage. Our utility usage we're not using it enough uh if, if you want to slow them down before they're out we throw our slows you want to take your walls before you die you basically want to get full value of your utility what should we work on during our next session okay okay so this is when we would start breaking it down so the next thing i really want to take a look at is kind of rotations on defensive side have an overall strategy on attack side as well and just having like a good understanding of what everyone needs to be doing for the map so then you can kind of you know you can just be playing how you should be playing and doing things so you're not really uh, unexpected or putting yourself in positions where you don't really get full value or, or have like a fair chance to win a gunfight 